Hi guys, welcome back to Fish on Angling. So yeah, back on the beach again today, and I'm back down Christchurch way again. So obviously I've had two good sessions with both Catch and Rays lately, um, but I'm not in the same point today. I'm more down towards Steamer Point area. I've never been here before. I've only been told about it. So I'm here to give it a go. It's going to be getting dark in about three quarters of an hour. I don't have any baits in the water yet because there is so many dog walkers around that I didn't get any bait out. So I'm just going to give it a half hour, wait till it gets dark and then we're fish from there really. I never really catch fish in a day anyway, so it hardly seems any point. But yeah, um, if you follow me on YouTube, you'll know that my last video I had a lot of talking in it about what baits I use, about how I wrap them and what rigs I use. Today I'm not going to go into it so much. So if you want to know about that, I'm going to fish exactly the same today. So go into my last video and have a look through there. But obviously if I do catch anything today, I'll explain what rig and what bait I've used. But right guys, I'm just gonna wait this out a little bit. I'll set up and get some baits in the water and I'll catch you in a bit. Right guys, you can see the sun's slowly going down. You can see the next tent on there. That's Jay Daniels. I'm down here with Jay again today. And hopefully between us we can catch some fish today. I'm just gonna spin you around. So yeah, I've got two rods out. So with one rig, I've just wrapped a squid up quickly and I've just thrown it out. And then on the other one, I've put a big mackerel fillet on there as well, because it's that time of day, isn't it, for bass. So it would be nice to get one. It's the right kind of conditions for a bass, but probably not a lot else. So it'd be interesting to see what we catch tonight. But yeah, so I've got two rods out now. I'm just about to do a free hook flapper, put some worm on it. I'm gonna try and, I'm gonna probably wade out a little bit further and try and cast it past the surf, but again, I'm not too fast now till it really gets dark and then that's when the fishing generally starts to pick up isn't it but yeah catch you in a bit and hopefully we'll see with a fish quite soon but yeah in a bit there we go guys so it begins it's actually quite early we've only been here sort of with baits in the water about half hour that's the first whiting of the night okay very uh, skinny early in the year i'm guessing they're really weird he's only got one eye one eyed whiting never seen that before but anyway, it's a ragworm bait, so I've got to expect these this time of year now. It's what, coming up mid-November, so yeah, let's get them back and hopefully we're going to have something a bit better than this. But I'm thinking we're going to have quite a few of these tonight. But there okay, let's get them back. And whiting number two. It's definitely going to be one of these nights tonight. Now, I'm not going to film every single whiting. But I will keep a count and then at the end of the video we can see how many we caught. But again, a little bit bigger, nothing exciting though. I um, took a whole squid that one, so it's even hard to bait around Whiten, really. But if you've got any tips, uh, please let me know. I'd rather, than, rather than put a whole mackerel out at a time, don't know what else to do. But again, let's get them back in, get baited back up and keep trying. There you go, whiting three, four, and five. Triple shot of whiting. It's definitely gonna be one of those nights tonight. So the top one took a strip of mackerel, the middle one took a strip of squid, and the bottom one took a ragworm. So they're not fussy eaters, unfortunately. But yeah, let's get them back. <laughs> Less said the better, really. So yeah, guys, flying out of the hurdles today, but all whiting, unfortunately. So at the moment, they've taken a whole squid, they've taken strips of squid, strips of mackerel, and ragworm. So the only thing that hasn't been touched by whiting so far is a sand eel with a squid. But then it looks like we're getting a knock on that rod at the moment, and I'm sure there's gonna be a whiting on there. So yeah, it's gonna be one of those nights, but hopefully we can just catch something in between all of them. But yeah, keep plugging away, and hopefully we'll get some results tonight. And another whiting. Oops. There you go. I'm not going to number them anymore because I've lost count and I look stupid on the video, so I'll put a, put a counter up here, probably. 
I might be there. Yeah. Um, lots of action on the rods now, but probably just lots of these. Yeah, a bit chunky, but yeah, get back here. Right then guys, second triple shot of the night. Let me just get them, they're in my bucket here. So hook number one, tiny power. Hook number two, whiting. Whiting number seven. Hook number three, the tiniest little raider. <laughs> That's awesome guys, three trips out and I've caught a ray in all three trips now. He's the smallest one, tiny little, little small eyed ray, but absolutely gorgeous as ever. Love these things, so chuff for that and it's not a whiting, so yeah. Hopefully the tides are turning now, we'll get some proper fish. Let's get all these three back, bait up and get them back out, but I've got another rod going as well, so I need to be quick. Right guys, the other rod's going now. Might have a session on our hands here at last. But, let's go and have a look. Right guys, starting to pick up now. Tiny little whiting, chuck them in a bucket. And, lovely bass. I haven't had one of these for a while. But yeah, these are kind of what I'm here to get really. I want a bass, but a much bigger one than this. But that's a nice sign, eh? Um, bit of a session on our hands now. I'm struggling to keep up the rods, but yeah. Good position to be in, eh? That's what we're here for. Lovely, I'm gonna get him back in. And then um, I'm gonna bait up, probably starting to go bigger baits now, try and get a big one of these now, I know they're here. But awesome, guys. So that's awesome, guys. Four species now, not bad, is it, really? Bass, pout, whiting, and a little ray. It's hard though, it's hard. I'm putting in a lot of seaweed, so I've had to move my rods a lot closer to the sea and put them up high to try and get away from the weed. As soon as that line hits the water, it's covered in seaweed. So, but it's time to pick up now. So that bass was on the free hook flap. I've literally been in the water for about two minutes and the bass took the squid head. So, my favorite bait, squid heads. Um, just gonna put another squid head on, probably two, big strips of squid now on the flapper and then I'm going to pull in um, the rod with a pulley pen on it and I'm going to put a nice big chunk of mackerel on there I think and try and pull in that bigger bass now but yeah awesome. I'll go and see Jay and see how he's getting on all right team lost count I'll put them in my bucket I'll get them back in in a sec um, yeah want to me a little update it's gone really quiet actually. I'm surprised there's even a fish on that one. The rods aren't getting any serious taps now, but there's a lot of seaweed again. So it's just persevering. I think we're still about two hours from high tide. We've still got plenty of time for a bigger fish to come. But um, I know Jay's struggling with seaweed now and I've just started to get a load of my rods. But yeah, just gonna put fresh baits on, get them back out really. I've um, still got a good two or three hours fishing here really, so there's a lot of time. And as you've seen here, it can go mad all of a sudden and then die down again. So I'm still hopeful for quite a few more fish yet, but you know, yep. we'll see. Right, let's get him back. Another whiting. Going very quiet now. Getting about one whiting an hour, so it's gone very poor. About an hour before high tide day, so we're going to give it another probably hour to two hours. But yeah, it wants to pick up really. Funny old night, but we had four species, not been too bad, but um, expected a little bit better to be fair. Let's get him back. And another white. Guys, got another white thing. Quite a big one, this one actually. But yeah, not what we want anymore. Lost count now. But the number would be up in the top corner, like I said earlier. But this one might make its way to the kitchen, this one. Um, make some goujons with some batter, I think. But, yeah. 
Oh well. Keep on going. About another hour left in me, I think. Probably coming up to midnight now, so coming up to high tide. So I'm just gonna fish over the top of it, right now, and then see where we go from there. But yeah. Back to a bit. Right guys, just a bit of an update. So yeah, unfortunately I've just reeled in my Tronix Pro BZ5 and see we got caught in uh, the end in the tip eye and it snapped the tip off. So like cleanly snapped the tip off the end of the rod, which is pretty disappointing to be honest. But um it happens, I'm not sure what I'd do, I don't think I'd bother getting it repaired. Uh, maybe I'd look out for some new rods. But for tonight I'm just gonna keep pushing on with two rods. I've um, only got about another half an hour to an hour left in me really, it's just I've only caught whiting for the last three or four hours and I want to catch something a bit more exciting really. But, um, got a bit more bait to use up so we're going to keep plugging away, but yeah, hopefully we'll end it with a high. Right guys, that's me all packed up. Yeah, not, not too bad a session in the end, um, a bit disappointing towards the last few hours. I'm um, just whiting really, but we had that ray earlier and a bass, so it wasn't too bad. So I'm going to come back again, maybe next time I'll, I'll go beach fishing, I'm going to come back here give it another go but um otherwise yeah a little bit disappointed i broke my rod tip and i'm gonna have to sort that out first but you know we'll bounce back and we'll be back soon so got a few whiting here i'm gonna take home for the kitchen so i might see you back in the kitchen after this um do a little ca catch and cook but um if not i'll see you next time guys thanks for watching right guys so back in the kitchen now and i've got my whites in here um i've had them in the fridge for a couple of days because i'm gonna make some goujons out of them so to do that i need to fillet them and then take the skins off so hopefully being in the fridge for a couple of days it should toughen them up a little bit but um, I know whiting are a bit of a pest on the beach and um, a lot of people don't like them but they actually can be quite tasty so we're gonna make a nice batter up and hopefully get a good meal out of them right so first I'm gonna fillet them right so just gonna fillet these my filleting skills are pretty horrendous, so no judging, please. I'm just going to run the knife down behind that um, fin until you get to the kind of backbone. Just doing this the wrong way. And then just going to spin the knife around. Run it carefully down that backbone. There you go, not too bad actually. There's a fillet there. And and then the same again the other side. Didn't go so well, so I didn't have that on camera. And then all I'm doing there, you see here, you run your fingers along, you can just feel the bones there. You just feel like a ridge of them there. I'm not gonna mess around trying to debone them. I'm just gonna cut that section off. So we're making it into goujons anyway. So that section off. And there you go. And I'm just going to chuck them in water, cold water, again try and toughen them up as best I can while I fill it the other ones, but again I won't show you. I'm just going to get filleted and I'll catch you back in a minute. So that's it, filleted badly as always. And now I've got to get the skin off, which I've never actually done this before, but I think the theory is quite simple. Let's um, to get the end, just a fingertip. Just cut it slightly. You just got to run that knife along the skin, like that, peeling it away. Yeah, it looks fine. Not too bad actually. A couple of the whites are quite small, but they um, I had to put them out of the misery on the beach because they swallowed hooks so I thought rather than waste them we bring them home and there we go look skins off and then I'm just going to basically cut these into goujon side pieces like that and I'm going to do that with the rest of them and again I'll see you back and we'll make some batter up right so now time to make up some beer batter for our goujons No exact measurements here. Just going to start with some flour and use a self raisin. And then 
I really am winging it, really. Then a bit of baking powder. Can crack some salt in there. Soy some pepper. Some salt. I'm just kind of going with what I've got here. So I've got some smoked paprika. Just gonna be too shy of it. Some um, peri peri salt here. I'm just gonna put a bit of that in it. It's got a mixture of all sorts in there. It's quite strong there. And then I'm gonna mix it up with some beer. You don't really want to over whisk it. It can be rough, but I want it quite thick. Perfect. It's quite thick consistency still. That's what we like. And I'm just going to chuck my goujons all in there. Get it all nicely covered in batter. We're just heating the oil up now. It's lovely and thick. Right, well, I reckon the oil is hot enough. But we're just going to check it. So you do that by getting some batter and just dropping it in there and if it floats like that then it's good to go. Right, so time to put our goujons in. That's so thick, I'm struggling to get the fish out. That guy looks good already, that, doesn't it? Cool, I can really smell that beer. So I just used a lager in this today. Just had what was in the fridge. So it smells good. It's all kind of, sort of breaking into little bits now, but still going to cook them up. So you don't need to cook them for long, it's just how crispy you want the batter really. I mean, these are quite small goujons so they're going to be cooked pretty much all, almost already. But I want that batter lovely and crispy so I'm going to keep going for a bit more. There you go guys, I reckon that's done. Look at that, it's amazing. Right guys, let's give it a go. Just squeeze some lemon out over it. Put a bit in my hair, not sure we need it. Okay, let's give it a go. Oh, can you hear how crispy that is? Lovely. Well, that's nice actually. Hot. Let's open this bad boy up. Yeah, look at that. Lovely and crispy. And a flaky fish. Still can't taste the fish that much, really. It's quite a bland fish for whiting for me. Um, but you know, it tastes great. You can flavour it with your batter and your seasoning. Yeah, your lemon juice or vinegar, mayo. Oh, it's good. Yeah, guys, that's definitely a good improvement on how I had it last time. I mean, last time I only had it seasoned in um, butter and garlic and some herbs, but no batter or anything. And I just, it's just too bland for me. I didn't like it that much. But this is much nicer. I think I'm going to 
bring Whiten home again a couple more times and try them in different kinds of batter. So maybe tempura batter next time with sweet chilli sauce. I reckon that'd be a good go as well. Um, because, you know, you catch so many whiting on the beach through the winter, it'd be good to bring some home and actually get a good meal out of it, really. It takes a bit of the sting out, doesn't it, when you're catching whiting all night on the beach. But Yeah, that's nice. Right, I'm going to save the rest for Mrs. Fishon. Um, hopefully you really enjoyed this video, guys. Um, giving you some ideas. Um, and I'll see you again soon. And I think we'll do some more catch and cooks through the winter. Um, they seem to be popular. So yeah, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll catch you soon.